The Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress was one of the most iconic aircraft of World War II. Known for its formidable firepower and ability to withstand heavy damage, the B-17 played a crucial role in the Allied victory over Nazi Germany. But while we often focus on the B-17's performance in combat, what was life actually like for the brave men who served aboard this legendary aircraft? In this video, we'll take a closer look at what life was like aboard the B-17 Flying Fortress during World War II. We'll explore the cramped conditions, the challenges of flying in combat, and the dedication and bravery of the crew members who risked their lives to protect their countries. So buckle up and get ready to experience what it was like to fly on one of the most legendary aircraft in history. This is the crew of the Memphis Bell, 324th Squadron, 91st Heavy Bombardment Group. Just one plane and one crew. And stay on the ball, gang, and she'll bring us back like she's always done. Okay? Let's go. To understand what life was like aboard the B-17 Flying Fortress during World War II, we need to first take a closer look at the crew members who served on these legendary aircraft. The B-17 had a crew of 10, each with their own specialized role and responsibilities. The first crew position was the pilot. The pilot was responsible for flying the aircraft and making decisions that would affect the success of the mission. The co-pilot, on the other hand, assisted the pilot and took over in case of an emergency. The navigator was responsible for determining the aircraft's location and plotting the course for the mission. The bombardier was responsible for dropping bombs on the target, while the flight engineer was responsible for maintaining the aircraft's systems and keeping it running smoothly. The radio operator was responsible for maintaining communication with other aircraft and ground stations, while the ball turret gunner operated the turret mounted underneath the aircraft. The waste gunners were responsible for manning the machine guns mounted on either side of the aircraft, while the tail gunner was responsible for defending the rear of the aircraft from enemy fighters. In some cases two positions were manned by the same person. The engineer also manned the top turret, while the radio operator also must operate the 50 caliber machine gun in the radio room. Each of these crew positions faced their own unique challenges and dangers. The pilots had to fly the aircraft in the face of enemy fire and extreme weather conditions. The bombardier had to drop bombs on enemy targets while being subjected to anti-aircraft fire. The gunners had to defend the aircraft from enemy fighters while exposed to the elements at high altitudes. But despite these challenges, the crew members of the B-17 Flying Fortress worked together as a team to achieve their mission objectives and protect their fellow crew members. Let's take a closer look at what life was actually like inside the aircraft. As you can imagine, flying inside a B-17 was no easy task. The B-17 was a large aircraft, but with a crew of 10, the interior of the plane was extremely cramped. Crew members had to work together in tight spaces, sometimes for hours on end. The flight deck was the cockpit where the pilots sat and controlled the aircraft. The pilots would have had a view out of the front of the aircraft and would have been responsible for navigating, communicating with other crew members, and flying the aircraft. They would have had to work together closely to ensure the safety of the aircraft and complete the mission. The bombardier's compartment was located in the nose of the aircraft and was where the bombardier sat. It would have been a small, cramped space that was exposed to the elements. The bombardier would have had to use the Norden bombsite to accurately target the enemy and drop bombs on their position. The position was dangerous, as it was the most vulnerable part of the aircraft and often the first to be targeted by enemy fighters. The bombardier shared a compartment with the navigator. The navigator would have had to use maps, charts, and other instruments to determine the aircraft's position and course. They would have had to work closely with the pilots to ensure that the aircraft was on course and would have had to adjust the course if necessary. The position was important for the success of the mission, as accurate navigation was essential for reaching the target and returning safely to base. The radio room was located behind the bomb bay and was where the radio operator sat. The radio operator would have had to constantly monitor the radio for incoming messages from other aircraft or ground stations, and relay information to the rest of the crew. They would have also been responsible for and ensuring that the aircraft's radio equipment was working properly. The radio operator also operated the radio room turret when the bomber came under attack.
the waste gunner stations were located on either side of the aircraft, near the middle of the fuselage. The waste gunners would have had to use their machine guns to defend the aircraft against enemy fighters. They would have had to be alert and watchful, scanning the skies for any signs of enemy aircraft. The position was dangerous, as they were exposed to enemy fire and could easily be hit. The ball turret was located underneath the aircraft and was used by a gunner to defend the aircraft from below. The ball turret gunner would have had to climb into the small, cramped space and operate the machine gun while hanging upside down. The position was particularly dangerous, as the gunner was vulnerable to enemy fire and had limited visibility. The tail gunner compartment was located at the rear of the aircraft and was where the tail gunner sat. The tail gunner was responsible for defending the aircraft from attacks from behind. They would have had to use their machine gun to shoot down any enemy fighters that approached from the rear. The position was dangerous, as the tail of the aircraft was a vulnerable area and often targeted by enemy fighters. Overall, serving inside the compartments of the B-17 Flying Fortress would have been a challenging and dangerous job. Crew members would have had to work together closely and be constantly alert for signs of danger. The positions would have been cramped and uncomfortable, and crew members would have been exposed to the elements and to enemy fire. Nevertheless, the bravery and dedication of the crew members who served on these aircraft played a crucial role in the success of Allied operations during World War II. The B-17 Flying Fortress was a key player in the bombing campaigns of World War II, carrying out countless missions over enemy territory. These missions were dangerous and demanding, requiring a high level of skill and courage from the crew members who served aboard the B-17. Before each mission, the crew would receive a briefing on the target and the expected conditions they would face. They would review the mission plan and check their equipment, making sure they were prepared for any eventuality. Once in the air, the crew had to remain vigilant for enemy fighters and anti-aircraft fire. The B-17 was a tough aircraft, but it could not withstand sustained attacks from enemy planes or ground-based defenses. The crew had to work together to defend the aircraft, with the gunners firing their weapons to fend off attackers and the pilots executing evasive maneuvers to avoid incoming fire. Even with these measures, the danger was ever-present. Despite these challenges, the bravery and dedication of the crew members who served aboard the B-17 cannot be overstated. Their commitment to their mission and to each other helped to turn the tide of the war. Today, we remember and honor these brave men and women who risked everything to defend their country and their way of life. 
Thank you for watching this video on the B-17 Flying Fortress. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, stay curious and keep learning. The Memphis Bell. The last few miles of this trip have been a joyride. The strain is over. They can leave their guns now. Now they know they're going to go home. To Spokane, Green Bay, Asheville, Detroit, Chicago, Fort Worth, and Yonkers. The bell comes in for her landing. But first Morgan buzzes the field. Cuts the grass with the giant fortress. It's against the rules, but this is a special occasion.